ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing SLI and Crossfire and the principle of whether you should be using Crossfire slash SLI or whether you should just be sticking with a single card solution and the drawbacks and the positives to each. So before we get into actually whether you should or should not do so, let's first of all talk about the actual principle of what it is. Now, I'm sure you know what it is for many of you, but maybe some of you don't so i figure it's a good idea to go through the common ground first and then we can of course be all on the same page sli was around back in the days of voodoo 2 which of course was released by 3d effects and 3d effects were subsequently acquired by nvidia the basic principle is that you are using two graphics cards and running them on the same machine to basically improve the speed of rendering. Now, in terms of SLI, some cards actually have SLI built in. So, for example, they would have two graphics chips on the same actual PCB. An example of that would be something like the GTX 690. So, the basic principle here, as I've said before, is that you pretty much get more performance out of two cards than what you would a singular card. Um, and how many cards can you have, SLI or Crossfire? Well, for example, some cards can support three cards uh, in Crossfire. And even ridiculously powerful cards, such as, say, the Titan, can indeed be Crossfired. Or, sorry, S put in SLI, I'm sorry. So, what are the drawbacks and what are the positives for SLI or Crossfire? Now in this, I'm going to just say SLI because it's very similar and it just saves me keep on saying or all the time. So anyway, as I was saying, what are the benefits and what are the positive? Or what are the negatives? Well, there are numerous as pretty much everything. Now to me, there are several reasons you would want to go SLI. And the first is a fairly obvious one that you're buying the latest hardware. So for example, you're buying the GTX 680 or GTX 670 and you don't feel that one card will be enough to play in either the resolutions that you want or the levels of AA for, or you might have say a 120 hertz monitor or goodness knows whatever reason. So in which case you don't feel that there's enough power. Another example of this would be say triple screens. And you don't feel that you're going to have enough power with that card, so you want to buy two of them. Another reason would be that you want to buy a cheaper card times two, because you realize that two of those cards in SLI, despite the fact that their price point would be the same as a more expensive card, um, will actually produce more performance. So for example, a pure example, let's say you were to buy a card that costs 150 and you were to buy two of those, so that's 300, right? Let's say you were to look at a comparative card that was also 300 and you realize that two of those one cards that cost 150 would actually outproduce the performance of the 300 pounds card, okay? So fairly simple. If you would like a very simple example of this, if you were to take something like the GTX 650 Ti Boost Edition and then you were to SLI them, in certain games you're actually not that far away from the GTX Titan. And this is of course the gap is even less if you start to overclock. Also you will indeed of course beat the GTX 680 and so forth as well. Now this 650 Ti Boost would cost you, and I'm just going to use British pounds, I'm just going to look at arbitrary pricing, £144. The Titan will cost you anywhere in the neighbourhood of around 900 And as for the GTX 680, you're looking at, you know, low 400s, maybe slightly under such, I don't know, 380, 390, that kind of range, depending on the manufacturer, the brand, um, of, or sorry, the type of card, in other words, whether it's overclocked, that type of thing. So that's that's a good reason to do it, and there is one other. Let's say you buy a card, and in say for example, twelve months' time, you say, "Hmm, this card's not playing the games as it should, or I want you know better performance." I'm going to go ahead and buy a second card to increase my performance levels, of course. Now, all three of those reasons are fairly decent in my opinion. However, there are a number of positives and a number of drawbacks to all of these. So, 
the drawbacks and the positives are pretty much the same in my opinion so uh, in terms of for all of them so you'll get what I mean in a second so I'm going to talk about the positives the first is that you get very good performance um, obviously depending for example if you go with a lower to mid-range card for example the 650 Ti boost then and I'm just going to be talking mostly about Nvidia you could easily translate this as well to AMD it's just going to make things a hell of a lot simpler for the purposes of this video if I stick to one uh, example because otherwise I'll be all over the shop but let's say for example that, that you were to buy the uh, 650 Ti boost um, with the intention of SLIing them so in other words if you get say two instantly or one couple of weeks later when you next get paid whatever well obviously you're going to get far greater performance that's good it'll cost you less for pretty good performance as well that's also good it also affords you more flexibility in the case that something falls over. So, for example, let's say that your GTX 650 dies after, I don't know, five months in your system. Let's say it, it just, you know, has to die and you have to RMA it. It does mean that you have a second card in there. And okay, you're going to be playing at less performance, but at least you do have an alternative. And that's always a good thing, by the way, because cards can sometimes die it's that simple it's also quite nice if you happen to sell the cards as well um generally speaking you can sell one keep the other one and then buy the other car card so for example let's say you were to sell one gtx 650 the gtx i don't know 760 comes out you were to buy that then you were to sell the other gtx 650 to help you know offset the cost stuff like that so financially it can be nice as well as well as you're spreading over the payment prices which if you're buying a new pc it can be a positive as well there are a number of other benefits such as as i've mentioned previously if you happen to want to um run multiple monitors it can be nice to do that as well um but primarily, the reason that people are going to do this is, honestly speaking, the performance. And yes, the performance is usually greater. However, there are a number of problems as well with it. And obviously, there are always drawbacks. Um, in my opinion, one of the problems with buying two cheaper cards, for example, the 650 Ti's and overclocking them, is extra power use. That may or may not be a big concern for you, depending on the specifications of your power supply, whether you particularly care about extra noise as well. Remember, two cards will be noisier. Um, if you're going water cooling, then obviously that's even less of a concern. But the only problem, of course, with water cooling is that means, of course, more pipes and so on in your system. So you might need to buy a bigger radiator or, you know, a bigger, a better water cooling system in general. So that can be a problem. The other benefit, or shall I say the other concern, depending upon your perspective, is a matter of drivers. Now, not all games scale amazingly with SLI. That isn't to say that all games scale badly. That isn't to say that all games scale terribly. That's to say that some games can have problems with SLI or SLI doesn't scale as well as maybe you'd like. Um, and in those cases, you're definitely going to get frames per second hit. And that's a bit of a problem. The other problem is selling the cards at a later date. Now, I know I did just say that it makes it easier in some respects, but it also makes it a bit trickier as well. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, you need to try and sell both cards. And two, those cards can sometimes depreciate in value a lot faster. So it depends on if you're willing to overlook that. Now, as I said before, power draw can be another issue as well. Um... It heavily depends on if you're willing to overlook the cooling, the the power usage, and so on. If you are, then buying two cheaper cards and you know SLIing them for the performance of a better card can be an option. It is a pretty good option, and many people start to do it. Make sure that you do buy a card with enough memory. Personally, I would go for at least one and a half gigs. Two gigs is preferable now, of course. So the other reason you may want to do this is, let's say you have an old card. Um, let's say, for example, you have something fairly old but still reasonable. I'll just use the GTX 460 because it was a very popular card back in the day. There are 
reasons to SLI, obviously you will get more performance than a single card. However, there are concerns as well. Primarily, primarily, I'm sorry, memory. In cases like that, you just won't really have enough RAM on the card to really allow the card to flex its muscles. And therefore, titles like, for example, Crisis or Far Cry or even games like Batman Arkham City, if you start pushing up the details as well as physics and so forth, it can really hammer a card with low memory. Um, even a even in SLI, you've got to understand that the problem with SLI is it doesn't double the amount of memory you've got. So, for example, let's say your card, uh, let's say your card has two, one gigabyte of RAM, and let's say that you were to buy another one of those cards, it doesn't suddenly mean you've got two gigs of RAM. It means that each of those cards has to have exactly the same data on it. So, because of this, it is effectively like you only have one gigabyte of video memory. If you're not really sure how to think of this or understand this, think of it like this. Rather than um, having a, two pages from a book, you've instead got the same page, but it's a photocopy of that page. So let's say, for example, page one has been photocopied. So you don't have page one and two. Instead, you just have the first page photocopied and therefore you have two copies of it. It's it's very similar to that. Um, so in terms of performance, it does go up, but in terms of the amount of memory, you don't get any more as well. So that can be a bit of a you know issue. Also, if your CPU is not particularly fast, um, you may lose performance as well because the CPU has to send data to both. This could also be a problem if you happen to have a more legacy PCI Express. I'm not saying you will. I mean, obviously, some of you may have PCI Express, you know, free with like a high-end CPU of some description. But it's just worth noting if you are upgrading, thinking of upgrading an older rig with um, a second card for SLI purposes. So performance in that respect can be a bit of a difficult uh, thing to really quantify because obviously if games are not memory kind of bound then it's not too much of a difficult in the decision it's a very good idea to go SLI um, especially if you have something like the GTX 480 on the other hand then you've also got sticky situations such as the amount of heat it produces as well as things such as you know the amount of power draw for example my previous card was a GTX 480 and I had a couple of decisions to make I could have gotten rid of the card and upgraded to the newer card, for example, the GTX 670, or I could have said to myself, you know what, I can just go SLI, get another GTX 480, stick them in SLI, and be done with it. And I decided to go with the second card, uh, so to replace the card, to be honest. I decided just to go for the GTX 670, and I tell you why. Um, extra heat of a second card, um, less memory, as well as the fact that I could get rid of my current card and get some cash for it, which means that the upgrade isn't that expensive anyway. So there's always that to think about as well. Also, you've got to remember other little uh, caveats in this. There are often not only benefits in terms of extra speed with newer cards, but also new technology that comes along as well. So that would be, for example, as I've said previously many times now, lower heat, lower power draw, that's all good and dandy. But also it could be a newer DirectX version, it could be better CUDA support, it could even, ironically enough, be better crossfire. It could be a number of different things, including even better multi-monitor support, which may or may not be a concern for you, depending, obviously, on your current setup at home. Um, so, yeah, that that's the only problem with that little philosophy. In my opinion, when you're considering adding a second card for the purposes of extending the life of a system, it can be good, especially if the current card you've got doesn't particularly take a lot of power anyway, or in the case of, say, for example, you can get the second card really cheap. For example, you could buy it off your friend really cheap, or you happen to see it on eBay cheap. So, in my opinion, generally speaking, it's better just to get rid of the current card you've got, stick it on eBay, sell it to a friend, whatever, or maybe even use it on a second system if that's what you want to do. For example, you know, 
you and your wife may play games or you might just want a spare system for the sake of i don't know just having one or a server or something so you know that could have you know positive benefits the other reason of course to go sli is you absolutely need a ridiculous amount of power and so the bit obviously the best option would be to use sli or to go for something like the gtx titan um in my opinion something like the titan is an absolutely fantastic card however do remember that the gtx 680 and sli will beat it as will the 690 by the way however there are reasons to go for a ridiculously powerful card like the titan you may want to sli the titan you don't have to worry about as i've said before scaling and sli slash crossfire as well so that can be a benefit honestly speaking I do like the idea and I do like the thoughts of SLI because it's just that extra, extra little bit of tech and, you know, you feel awesome and cool. Uh, but whenever I have the opportunity to not increase the chance of something not working as it should or just that extra level of complexity, I try not to go for it. Um, and the simple reason is that if scaling on a particular game sucks i know the performance is going to be lower than what i would like um, that isn't to preclude buying the card a second card it's just to say that if necessary i will always go with a cheaper or should i say the same price range anyway but go for a single card just because i prefer the power draw reasons um, less difficulty to keep cool this is especially true if you're in a more cramped case as well because remember both cards one is on top of the other therefore airflow can be a concern as well you've also got those extra wires you may need a better power supply i'm not saying you will you may already have a power supply that's easily up to the job and therefore you don't have to concern yourself but on the other hand you may not as i was saying it's not like i'm against sli or crossfire i actually really like the technology and i think it's a very cool piece of technology i just think that there has to be reasons to use it um and honestly speaking if you have an old rig or an older card and you feel that you can get away with just adding a second one for example let's say you and your friend both had bought a gtx 6 uh, 480 back in the day and let's say he says to you you know what i'm selling my old card for you know 50 60 or you can just have it or whatever then there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't take that card and go into sli similarly if you can see that card on you know ebay for cheap then definitely grab it otherwise i'd say just stick your other one on you know for sale and buy something like the GTX 670 or, for example, the uh, Radeon 7950. You're going to get a much better performance in terms of, you know, per watt. The heat is going to be better. You don't have to worry about scaling. Obviously, though, it does all depend upon the resolution you're playing. I'm coming across, uh, you know, let's say 1080p. And let's say you play in 1080p, often one single card will be fine. On the other hand, if you're on triple monitors, you may just be SOL. You really probably will need multiple um, cards. It's probably that simple. It's, it most likely is that simple. You know, even a Titan in very, very high performance situations, for example, stuff like Crisis, uh, free or max settings with uh, triple monitors it will bring the titan to its needs on the highest quality settings it's really that simple therefore you most likely will need say two gtx 680s at minimum there is one final point i'd like to make and that regards uh, micro stutter now most people associate micro stutter with amd cards and this is a pretty big subject and i'm just kind of looking into this now as it really depends upon the way benchmarking's done um and it's really got to do with the way fraps itself or other applications which test frames per second um actually measure those frames um i don't really want to get into a whole thing on this but some people swear blind that micro stutter does not exist and you know it absolutely makes no difference in performance or your you know visual gameplay even if it does exist other people say that they notice it a little bit but it doesn't make much of a difference and other people say that it absolutely destroys the gaming experience they absolutely hated it and that they would like to just get rid of their two cards and get a single one or whatever reason 
honestly speaking, I suggest you do some research on this yourself. Um, I haven't really had any experience with Crossfire myself, so I can't really go into too much detail other than to say that from what I have read, it's mostly to do with the way that the frame rates are read in terms of the minimum frames a second. And generally speaking, minimal frames a second can be in sometimes lower than what you'd expect on SLI setups as well. Personally speaking, as I've said, if you need the extra power because you're running a very large monitor or mon multiple monitor setups, or you just want to get a little bit of extra life out of your aging uh, graphics card, for example, um, let's say the GTX 480, which is still a very good card, by the way, um, if you can get a second one for a decent price and power power draw is not a problem and the card's already got a decent amount of memory on there and you can get it cheap, there's absolutely a fantastic reason to go SLI. If you need the extra performance because you're building a new system and that system is going to be powering, as I've said before, a very large screen on multi-monitors, then by all means, great reason to go SLI. However, generally, if it's just you know for lower end cards you want two of them to you know outperform x whatever you know other cards are out there so for example two gtx 650 ti's to try and outperform you know the gtx 680 it's very tempting um however i personally wouldn't go that route that's just a personal preference you may feel differently the only reason i wouldn't is just because i don't really want the headache of needing to worry about sli whether it scales well in games as i said some games scale absolutely beautifully with sli no problems at all others scale slightly worse nvidia will then release drivers or amd will release drivers which improve that performance um and the other reason of course as i've said before is extra heat extra need to call however that doesn't necessarily preclude or say it's a bad idea it can be a very nice idea depending upon the rest of your system so anyway if that hasn't particularly answered whether you yourself should go uh slo crossfire i would ask yourself this can you do the whole thing yourself with only one card in other words will one card be enough to do it if the answer is yes then go with one card uh and you know, be happy if the answer is no because you know you need more power on that particular screen or what have you then definitely go a second screen or if you could buy a second card for cheap which will give you a lot of extra performance then go ahead and buy it once again that's only my opinion i know some people absolutely love sli but anyway a few people have kind of messaged me asking me on my thoughts on sli and that is them so anyway, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you guys are not hearing too much noise in the background. It's pretty noisy here. We have neighbours with family round and so they're talking in their garden and um, goodness knows what else. So it's a kind of noisy environment, which is something I don't particularly like. Unfortunately, sometimes I have no power over the noise levels. Anyway, I hopefully you've enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.